Say, look, would you give these wonderful worshipers online a round of applause? We want to wish you the best of the holidays today in this particular worship. We're asking that you will pray for us and pray with us. We're always glad to have you with us uh, in the worship live in the heart of Houston, in the heart of Cashmere Gardens. Welcome to the worship today. This month, we're hoping and praying that you will join us in our emphasis and focus for this month of December is what I'm calling and what we call Random Acts of Kindness, R-A-K, Random Acts of Kindness. Find someone that you want to serve this month of December for Christmas and just do something randomly, an act of kindness, whatever it is that's in your heart to do something for someone who may not be as blessed as you are, as privileged as you are. Listen, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to buy me seven Christmas cards and that have the word Jesus or Christ in each one of them, and I'm going to pass them out to total strangers seven total strangers because I want to make sure they hear the word Jesus Christ this Christmas. We've heard a lot about the pandemic, and that's real. we heard a lot about the virus, about the vaccine, that's real. We got that. We get that. But somebody needs to hear the name Jesus Christ this month. Well, he is still the reason for the season. We calculate that about 2,000 of you who listen to us every Sunday. If 2,000 people three things, random acts of kindness, we would touch at least 6,000 people, random acts of kindness for the Lord Jesus Christ. So join us this month, and uh, we can't tell you what's on your heart, but we hope that you'll join us in doing something for someone else uh, so that they can be blessed this holiday season. Well, oh come all ye faithful, let's all stand and help us sing today. seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, 
who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Selah. Lift up your hands, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. May God add a rich blessing to the reading, the hearing, and those who are doers of his word. Amen. You may be seated. Let us go to God in prayer. Eternal God, our maker and our creator, oh, how we praise you this morning, oh God, on this beautiful, beautiful day. We thank you for the sun that is shining. We thank you for the clouds and the clear skies. We thank you for waking us up this morning to see a brand new day. We thank you, oh God. Forgive us our debts this morning as we forgive our debtors. For we have erred and fallen short in your glory. But you are a gracious God. You are a good God. You are a forgiving God. You are a loving God. We want to say thank you for forgiving us of our debts and our sins this morning. Bless us, oh God, as we go forth today. And let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our hearts be good and acceptable in your sight. Lest we forget those who are less fortunate than us, oh God. Bless us to be a blessing to someone today. Bless us to do some act of kindness to someone that we don't even know today. And to trust you to take care of us. We thank you for all the blessings. We thank you for a new administration. We thank you for hope. We thank you for those who are going to serve you and your people. And oh God, as we come today, we're asking a special blessing upon your word that you would bless our pastor and every shepherd that's standing in the gate today. Bless those of us who hear. Bless those of us who sing. Bless those of us who are ushering. Bless those of us who are worshiping you. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, let all who pray say amen. Listen, one of the things that uh, someone just texted me this morning as I shared with them about these random acts of kindness, there might be a nursing home close to where you live. And in that nursing home, no one comes to visit that parent, that mother, that grandmother, that grandfather. Why don't you do that this time? Perform a random act of kindness by sending whatever you can send to be supportive of that person. It may be just a, a brand new pair of white socks. It may be baby powder or baby oil or something that you can do randomly for someone else. I know that the Lord is working with you as you, as you think about what you can do for someone else, not yourself, but for someone else. Particularly, the nursing homes are on my heart, and so I hope that they are on yours as well. You're going, to grow, you're going to get old if you don't die young. So we want to pray for those who are in all of our nursing homes across America. May the Lord strengthen them this holiday season. Well, the singers are here. They're going to bless us with song. And I hope you don't let them do all the singing. Help them to sing along as well. Get out of hand and the praise today.
and thy land Beulah. For the land for the Lord delighteth in thee. And thy land shall be married. For as a young man married a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over over thee. Yes, verse 6. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold thy peace day nor night. Ye that make mention, or neither make mention of the Lord, keep not silence, our Lord, and give him no rest till he establish until the until he make uh, Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Yeah, yeah. The Lord has sworn by his right hand and by the arm of his strength. Surely I will no more give thy corn to be meat uh, of the stranger, I'm sorry, for thine enemies, and the sons of the stranger shall not drink thy wine, for the which thou hast labored. Verse 9, and it's the final verse. But they that have gathered it shall eat it and praise the Lord. And they that have brought it together shall drink it in the courts of my holiness. Amen. I don't talk about the these two words. Never alone. All right. Never. Never alone. Oh my my. Never alone. It's a lengthy reading, but I believe after reading this text, I am absolutely convinced, hmm. absolutely convinced, that we are not alone in this journey we call the Christian journey. All right, all right. We are not by ourselves. We have perfect proof. 700 years before the birth of Christ, God says to them and to us, we are never alone. Never. No wonder Jesus did what he did in his earthly ministry. What, no wonder he did all of the miracles, all of the healings, all of the miracles that he did. No wonder he did that because God just won't leave us alone. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's good news today. That it is. It's not that we deserve to be not left alone. <laughs> he could have left us alone when we said the first time. <laughs> yeah. We messed up the first time. He could have left us absolutely all by ourselves. Yeah. But he says, I'll never leave you. No what I said. It doesn't matter what you've done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What you are doing. Huh. Or what you're going to do. Mm. You and I are never, never alone. Hallelujah. I suppose Christmas, Emmanuel L. Song says, <laughs> is God with us still. Yes, 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 yes. Well, let me say to this side, I think I've got to over here. Uh -huh. God is still with us. Yeah. Yeah. And for all we've been through in 2020. Yes, sir. God is still with us. Still with us. Hallelujah. I, I, think, I think that God deserves some praise to God already. Yeah. Yeah. Because we don't have to be here today. Right. God told me that this would be good news to those who needed good news today. Yes, sir. That God is with us. And we have proof positive uh -huh. in the life of Jesus. This is his birthday month. Uh -huh. We ought to at least call his name. All right. Uh -huh. We talked about everything else. Uh -huh. As I said earlier, we're talking about, and right this so, about the health concerns and challenges uh -huh. of the nation. That's good. But the Lord is still on the throne. And I think somebody ought to mention him at least this month. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think somebody ought to at least say his name, Jesus, who is still the Christ. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Still Emmanuel. Still Emmanuel. 
we have proved positive. No, 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 no. Now we understand and know fully why Jesus did miracles. And he did them primarily to prove to us that he won't leave us alone. All right. All right. You remember, uh, you saw a blind man whose sight had left him alone. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And said, I can't leave you alone like that. I'm going to give you your sight back because I just won't leave you in the dark. All right. All right. I can't leave you alone. Hmm. He remembered it. You remember, he saw a deaf man one day. And uh, his hearing had abandoned him. Yeah. Because if you live long enough, something is going to abandon you. You're right. You're right. You're right. And whatever has left you, Jesus comes to fill in the blank. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. He says your, your, your hearing has left you. And he gave him his hearing back because he just won't leave you alone. Hallelujah. You, you, you don't remember the, the blind or the deaf man. Maybe you can remember the lame man. Uh -huh. And the lame man who had no power to lift himself up. And Jesus saw him and said, your ability, your power has abandoned you. Yeah. Yeah. And I can't leave you on your bed. Yeah. Uh -huh. I got to bless you. Yes, sir. Because you were not made for the bed. You were made to be blessed. Yeah. I need to tell somebody that today. Yeah. You are not made for the bed, your bed of affliction. All right. You are made to be blessed. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you saw a man with a stammering tongue, his speech, uh, and a bed. Yeah. Because if you live long enough, as I said earlier, something is going to leave you. Yes, sir. It's going to abandon you. you it, it's, going to, it's going to get beyond your ability to hold on to. He saw him and his tongue and his speech had abandoned him and he straightened out his tongue because Jesus won't leave you alone. Yeah. I should have got no amen to that. Yeah. You know, you know, he saw the sick and, and uh, health had abandoned him. Mm -hmm. The woman with an issue of blood can testify to the fact he wouldn't leave me alone. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. I tried to be inconspicuous, but he wouldn't leave uh -huh. me alone. Yeah. Uh -huh. Some of you tried to be uh, sick in silence, but the Lord just won't be yeah. Yeah. you alone. I just say, anybody here, you got something going on in your life you haven't told anybody? Right. You kept it to yourself? Only to find out Jesus already knew. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Don't leave. You know, he saw a man who was broken and gave him his wholeness because he won't leave. You alone. Hallelujah. Oh, that was at least 5,000 men without women and children counting them. At least 15,000 on that hillside. Yeah. And that's their provenders, their victuals, their food supply have abandoned them. And Jesus said they need not depart. All right. All right. I'm going to fill in uh, because they cannot find any groceries out here in the wilderness. Mm. Their food supply had abandoned. I ought to have at least 15 people in here know he will feed you. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody who can really raise their hand for this one. You've had to sit on the front seat in sorrow. Mm. Buried your mother, buried your loved one. Yeah. And John came and sat next to you. Yes, sir. Comfort came and sat on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. Because Jesus said, Sister, you're sitting on the front seat. I won't leave you alone. And the Lord got you through that thing. Because he just will not leave. You know, maybe you've not been sick, you've not been deaf, maybe you've not been had a, st a stammering tongue, maybe you've not lost a loved one. I tell you what, I know what will get us all to say, man. Maybe we were a sinner one day. Well, no. Yeah. Jesus says, I can't leave you like that. Yeah. I'd rather die in your world than live without you in my yes, I can't leave you. I can't leave you alone. Come on. 
that's what this text is all about today. It really says to us, we are not alone. He says that in Isaiah 700 years before the birth of Jesus. He proves it by three things. And I'll share those three things, and I'll be happy all by myself. I guess I'm the only one happy this morning. That I'm not by myself. I am, I am, I am thankful today that Isaiah pins for us. It is for Zion's sake. Uh, don't look past that. God says, I will not leave you because I'm, whatever I do for you, I've got other things in mind to go along with it. I'm good to you for Zion's sake. I bless you for Zion, not just because you've been good, but because of Zion's sake. That's what he said. For Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. And I need at least 25 of y'all who say, I can't, I can't hold my peace. I got to can't help it. I got to at least wave my hand. Yeah. I may not be, you may not be able to hear me say amen, but there's an amen in my spirit. Yeah. There's a praise in my heart. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Says, I am saying, yeah. I won't hold my peace. And for Jerusalem, if you underline the word and between all these verses, because in almost every verse, there are compound blessings. In other words, he gives you two blessings for the price of one. It seems to suggest that the Lord has a sale on blessings. I'm going to give you double for your trouble. I ought to have at least 15 more people here. Know so that he will put food on your table. And on your back. Yes, sir. Amen. Yeah. Yes, sir. He'll rock you to sleep that night and wake you up early in the morning. Yes, He'll put food on your table and drink on your table to wash it down. Yes, I've been compoundedly blessed. I don't know if that's a word or not. I've been compoundedly blessed. You have to have it. Yes, sir. He says, for well, Jerusalem's sake, I won't hold my peace. And for uh, Jerusalem, I, I will not rest until the righteousness comes forth as brightness. Uh-huh. He literally said, between verses 1 through 5, the reason why I know I'm never alone and prove I can prove I'm never alone is because the promises he has placed in his word. Yeah. Yeah. Say that the promises. Promises. He has placed in his word. Seven thousand promises in his word. And every one of them is yes and amen. Every one of them, yes and amen. We have the assurance in God's word that he makes promises, but here's the here's this will knock you off the feet. He keeps his promises. Unlike many people you know in your life who make promises and don't keep them, God makes promises and keeps them. So that's what he said. Look look at between verse 1 to 5 and underline these particular promises. Verse 1, he promises us righteousness. And we need righteousness because we have none of our own. You're right. All of our righteousness, Isaiah says, is like filthy rags before the Lord. So we need clean righteousness. In other words, if you're going to live dirty, you need somebody in your life that's going to live clean. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So that He can wash your sins away. Hallelujah. Here is a promise, He says. I promise you in verse one, righteousness. In verse two, He promises. The Gentiles, that's us. We're not we're non-Jews. The Gentiles will see who you are. Yeah, they will see righteousness. They will see it as well. We ought to live and thank God that we've lived long enough to see God cover our sins with his righteousness. Yeah. Gentiles. Not the original ones. But we've been adopted into the family of God. We have been grafted into the body. So 
So he says in verse number two or three, kings will see who you are. Kings will see who you are. Did you know the Christian is somebody? Nobody of ourselves, but there's somebody in God. All right, all right. King for that very day. That he is Lord of Lord and King of Kings. Kings will see it too. Kings will see it too. And then here's another promise. I'm going to get a new name. <laughs> I don't know what my new name is going to be. My first name, I didn't know what it was going to be. I was told my name was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Aren't you glad that you don't have to live like what folk call you? Because <laughs> other folk got some names for you. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Let me talk to this side. Yeah, yeah. Talk. Other people will write your footnotes in your life. They will call you everything but a child of God. But just because they call you that, that doesn't mean that's who you are. You're right. You're right, you're right. Don't let other people define who you really are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't let other folk make weather for you. Come on, come on. If you came here happy, tell your neighbor if you brought some cold water pour it on yourself. Because yeah. I came to praise the Lord. Yeah. I'm not gonna let you put a cloud over my life. I came here with a smile on my face and a praise in my heart. And if you don't want to praise him, don't hinder me. I got that, you got it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, I know we name our children a lot of things. I ain't gonna get into that. But sometimes I think we were high when we named our children. <laughs> what in the world? Child can't even spell the name. Yeah. Must have been tanked. <laughs> oh, y'all hear me? Yeah, we hear you, Pastor. But God says, I'm gonna give you a new name. That's irrevocable. You can't change it. I'll spell it for you. J E S U S. I don't know what my new name is, but it's gonna be it's gonna be close to Jesus. Because we're gonna look just like him. That's what he says. I am God. I am who God says I am. Yeah. Write that down. I am who God says I am. And I may be a lot of things, but left alone is not one of them. Amen. In other words, I may, you can call me whatever you want to, but guess what? I'm not by myself. Just because I'm alone doesn't mean I'm lonely. I may be in the car by myself, but I got a passenger next to me. I know you can't see him. I know you don't know who he is. But he and I have been talking all down 45 and around 16. And a matter of fact, he's been giving me directions. He's been telling me which way to turn. Don't you thank God for a friend like that? Yes, you are. You've got a new Here's what he tells us. We're not left alone. That word alone means left empty. We're not left empty. Go, go. Okay, all right. You don't believe. Look what he says. In, he says in verse number one, you will get righteousness. It's going to be bright. Yeah. It's going to be salvific. It's going to have salvation attached to it. Yeah. It's going to be like a lamp that burns, continues to burn. Gentiles will see your righteousness. Kings will see it. You're going to get a new name in verse number two. And then you're going to be crowned. You shall have a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord. Yeah. He calls it a royal diadem. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. A royal diadem. See, we are royalty before you ever knew about anything about royalty. Uh, yeah. I, uh, one of my favorite movies, Eddie Murphy, is coming to America. They didn't know he was a prince until the king showed up. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Somebody watched it with me. Yes, sir. He was trying to be low key. He was trying to be just somebody regular. He worked at McDonald's. 
And guess what happened? When they found out he was a prince, yes, sir. they looked at him. Yes, sir. Yeah, things change. Uh -huh. yeah, now, now, people, they don't think you got royalty in your veins. I know that based upon the way they treat you. But when they find out that you are related to a king, you're the king's child. Yes, Lord. They'll see you a little bit different. And the promise in this book is you are a royal diadem. Somebody, you know, that's what he said. Yeah. Yeah. And then he said, my favorite verse, now for, number four, he said, you shall be no more turned and forsaken. That word forsaken means abandoned. People may think you are abandoned. People may look at your life and see what things have abandoned you. You lost your house, you lost your car, you lost your health, you lost friends, you lost a lot of things that have abandoned you. They may call you abandoned, but baby, you've not been left alone. This book says in verse number four, that there's going to come a time when there were people will no more call you forsaken. Mm -hmm. Neither shall the land anymore be turned desolate or empty or deserted. But thou shalt be called Hephzibah. That word is a Hebrew word, Hephzibah, but it simply defines itself in the next few verse, words. He says, Hephzibah simply means, and the land Bethel, the Lord, and here it is, the Lord delighted in you. In other words, God is absolutely delighted that you are in him. When you somebody sometimes they say well uh, this is so and so and so and so and you say delighted uh, yeah, all right. I'm delighted to meet you yeah. anybody feel delighted to meet somebody yeah, right. look at somebody across the pew from you and tell them I'm delighted to see you I'm delighted to see you delighted. I'm delighted I'm delighted. 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 you brighten up my pew yeah. Yeah. you brighten up my life uh -huh. brighten up the sanctuary uh -huh. you brighten up my my horizons yes, because of you. And the Lord says, when I look at you, St. Luke, I am delighted. I'm delighted. You're not called forsaken. You're not called uh, abandoned. God delights in you. Is that what he says? That's a promise in his word. He put it there. And then, and then even the land where I stay has got a different name. It's called Beulah Land. Beulah. Now I know the slaves always talked about Beulah Land. They sang about Beulah Land yeah. and that kind of thing like that. But let me tell you what, where they were talking about won't hold a candle to what he's talking about. All right, all right, all right. No, no. Mm -mm, mm -mm. no, 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 no. This Beulah uh, has no slavery in it, just servants. Yeah. Are y'all hearing that? He says, this land that I'm talking about is a land that I have prepared for them that love me. How I many you believe that promise? Yes, yes. He says, here is the land. Here's the land. The Lord delighted in you. And the land shall be yours. That's a promise. That there is a land with my name on it that I don't have to pay rent for. Taxes on. It's mine. 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 There's a promise of his words. Anybody here believe the promises in his word? That you are never abandoned? Well, I still got two people in here that never said amen. <laughs> Let me see if I can get them to say amen, then I'm going to move on from this point. You may be a lot of things, but abandonment is not one of them. I'm down to one person now. In his word. Can I just give you some of these promises? Yeah, yeah. When you get a chance, Psalms 27 and 10. Oh, my father, have 
my mother forsake me? I'm old now. As a matter of fact, 
I'm probably the age that he baptized me. Mm. Uh -huh. if, if I had that, he was an old man when I was when, when I was born. Yeah. All I know is he was an old man. I don't know how old because he was when he died. But most of the preachers that I knew in those days were always old preachers. Yeah. Yeah. Guess what I am now?
what they said, but it's going to be hard to deny what they see. I will never leave you. No, will I forsake you. I put proclaimers all along my path. Verse 7 says, I give them no rest. I was up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Week before last with this message. I couldn't rest. I, I was rereading the verse, and I couldn't go back to sleep. And I read that I give him no rest till he is established, till he grounds, and until he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. I can't rest until Jerusalem, because Jerusalem was created for praise. Can I help you out right quick? You were created to praise. Praise. Yeah. I don't know what you do for the Sunday, but I know or every Monday through Friday and Saturday, but you were created to praise. praise. Yeah. But there's somebody to tell them, Neighbor, neighbor. I was created to praise. I, I have to praise him. Now I may get a little loud, yeah. or I may not get a little loud. Whichever uh -huh. comes first uh -huh. is the way I praise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but I was created to praise and proclaim us uh -huh. along my life. God put them there yeah. because I didn't get to where I am all by myself. Come on now. Oh, every time I go to the airport, I praise God for that little man in that truck. Yes, sir. Because that little man in that little small truck hooks the nose of his truck to the nose of that airplane. Yes, sir. And he pushes that airplane out to the runway. Yes, sir. Without that little man, I don't know who he is, don't know his name. I don't know where it comes from, how much he gets paid, but I know one thing, I can't take off without that little help. I ought to have some help in here. Yeah. You, ought to, you, see, you don't have to know anybody to thank God for him. Yeah, right. <laughs> he pushes me out to the runway. And let me just tell you, Herod, somebody pushed you out to the runway. Yeah. Yeah. You are where you are because somebody pushed you out there. Yes, sir. It may have been your first grade teacher. Uh -huh. It may have been your fifth grade uh, principal. Uh -huh. It may have been your old pastor or your G mama or your G daddy. Uh -huh. But somebody got you. Yeah. 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 You didn't get here on your own. Right. Right. You had a proclaimer in your life yes, to teach you the Bible. Yeah. Uh, thank God for your Sunday school teachers. Yes, sir. Oh, that little old lady who wouldn't let you chew gum. <laughs> In church on Sunday school, <laughs> you put that gum on a Martin Luther the King thing. Yeah, yeah. Y'all hearing that? Yeah. She wouldn't let you talk show out at church. Yeah. No, she would take you out and pull yeah. something off of a tree. Yeah. I'm talking about the set now. Yeah. Uh huh. And she would tell my mother after church what she had to do to me, but she did not hold back. The Board of Education from my seat of understanding. And I am where I am because somebody taught me a long movie. I'm getting ready to go home. I thank God for the promises in He has placed in His Word. And secondly, I thank God for the proclaimers He has placed along the way. Yeah, yeah. But then the last thing I want to thank God for is the provisions He has provided for my work. Yes, Lord. Yes, down there somehow. <laughs> the provisions He has promised and provided for my work. Yeah. Look at verse number eight, and I tell you what I'm talking about. The Lord has sworn by His right hand. Yeah. I said the Lord has sworn by His right hand. Uh -huh, and that right hand is the hand of the power. Yeah, yeah. The right hand is the hand of fellowship. Okay. Yeah. And he has sworn by the right hand, the hand of all of his strength. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's what he said, uh, that uh, no longer will the enemies and the sons of strangers drink the wine and uh, eat the corn that's been promised to me. Yeah. In other words, he says, uh, what the devil took from you, I'm going to give it all back to you. Do 
position here. I am going to provide uh, all of your needs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I ought to have somebody here today who can lift up their hand uh, and say, The Lord will provide. The Lord will provide. Uh, for everything you need, and the Lord said uh, you can bet on it. Yes, but have a witness in here. Uh, he said, uh, I won't allow your corn, that's your meat, at the end of the day, your meat, and uh, the son of strangers uh, to drink your wine. Now, understand this uh, the corn. Uh, is your necessity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the drink uh, symbolizes uh, your joy. Hey. Yeah, I like that corn ribs. I think I like that corn. <laughs> That's it. The corn symbolizes what you need yeah. every day. And uh, the drink uh, of the wine uh, represents your joy. Now, most of you uh, cannot shout, uh, oh, corn, uh, but I got some witnesses in here uh, that still can shout over uh, the wine. Uh, uh, thank God uh, he gives us uh, our necessities. Uh, food on your table, uh, shout thank you. Food on your back, uh, shout thank you. Uh, do I have a witness in here? Shelter over your head. Shout thank you. A bed to sleep in. And ain't got nobody to have to sleep in the bed with you. Shout thank you. Have I got a witness in here? But every now and then, he lets the jaw bells ring. Ain't God
Right. 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 Saying to us, what are y'all doing that for? It's getting worse and not better. Mm -hmm. But you told us we are never, never alone. Thank you. So we choose you. Choose you today, Lord. We choose your promises, your provisions. Thank you for your provisions. Give us our necessities and our joys. Yes. 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 Whatever the enemy took from us. You promised to give it all back. We thank you right now. Thank you. That we are never alone. Grant us now your riches. Cover us now with your peace. In Jesus' name. Amen. I see the light in flash. She, I've heard the thunder roll. Your car, I send the Be 
will save you. He won't fit you for certain. Let him do that when he promises. 